Okay, so in three, two. Good evening. I now call to order the Equity Committee meeting with the Equity Advisory Council for Thursday, November 4th, 2021. In accordance with the Board of Education's amended resolution approved at the October 13th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members or in a hybrid manner with only some individual board members participating remotely subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's equity committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through Microsoft Teams live on the BCPS website. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, committee and council members will state their names before speaking. Ms. Fast, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Scott. Present. Dr. Hager. Present. Ms. Mack. Present. Ms. Pastor. Present. Mr. Thomas. Present. Thank you. Ms. Fast, please call the names of those staff members attending today's meeting. Dr. McComas. Present. Dr. Yarbrough. Present. Mr. Handy. Present. Are there any other staff members attending? Yes, Ms. Charlie Green. I believe I see Dr. Holmes. Dr. Jeffrey Holmes. Great. Maria Lowry. Michelle Stansberry. Kevin Jennings. Heather Martin Denzel. Here. Oh, sorry. So I am going to call roll for the um, the council members. Okay. Okay, so that's next. Ms. Fass, um, please call the role of the Equity Advisory Council members participating in today's meeting. Thank you. I have Jackie Brewster, <clears throat> uh, Clifford Collins, Bianca Crockett, present, Maggie Cummins, present, Solomon. Oh my God. Solomon Davis, Heather Denmeyer, present, Bo Dunlap, Kelvin Ganesh, Kevin Jennings, present, Shane Jensen, Sherelle Jones, present, Monica Joins Massey, Dr. Scott Krugman, Jane Lee, Maria Lowry, present, Marcellus McQueen, present, Lisa Norton, present, Aaron O'Toole Trivis, present, Marlena Pearsell Colton. Dr. Bash Farrowin, Abby Plusen, Lena Polite, Brianna Ross, present, Dr. Monica Sample, present, Abir Shanawi, Donna Sibley, Dr. Zamira Simpkins, 
Michelle Stansberry. Present. Megan Stewart Sicking. Tiffany Stiff. Dr. Aaron Sullivan. Present. Lauren Tillman. Present. Sam Tillman. Avery Webb. And Julie Zelinsk. That concludes the members of the council. Great, thank you so much for that. Um, so uh, the first item of new business is the Equity Advisory Council Overview. And for that, I call on Mr. Handy. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Uh, Ms. Fast, next slide, please. All right, so I want to welcome our advisory council members. Um, this is the first meeting of the advisory council. Uh, just going to share our agenda for this evening. We've had our opening remarks from Ms. Scott. Thank you, Ms. Scott. I'm going to go into a little bit of um, overview for the council. We've had introductions for roll call, but I want to give time for each of the council members uh, to give a little more background on who they are and uh, who they represent, and I will uh, go through the names, call out, um, you know, some affiliations and names, and then um, have council members uh, respond with, you know, some more about just a, you know, brief intro. Then we'll talk about the role of the advisory council. Uh, we'll break that out into a few sections. All of our work will be grounded in policy 0100, which is equity. It's an equity resolution um, that this committee has recently um, produced, and we're going to share that. We're also going to talk about a strategic plan for BCPS, which is called the Compass, our pathway to excellence. From there, we'll go into the MABE equity lens questions, and MABE is the Maryland Association of Boards of Education. Some questions to help us apply the equity lens as we make decisions and have discussions um, throughout our time together. Then we'll talk about budget priorities. And finally, we'll close out with discussions about subsequent meetings. Uh, we have a recommendation as far as frequency and just want to share that. Um, before we close out today. All right. So um, at this point, we will get into um, some introductions, kind of go back to hearing from our council members, and we'll go in a little more detail. So Ms. Fast, next slide, please. All right, so we're going to do um, a similar activity. Uh, Ms. Fast did our roll call. Um, I'm going to go through my list, and uh, when you hear your name called, uh, Actually, please make sure that the name I'm using is your preferred name. From there, please talk about your connection to BCPS. And then lastly, I'd like you to share your top priority um, regarding BCPS and equity. And as you give your name, um, I'm going to give a affiliation and that'll give you some indication of how you were selected and invited to the council. Um, but again, feel free to make sure, uh, you know, we're aware of, of, of affiliations that might uh, connect you to BCPS. All right. We'll go off camera and I do invite you to you know turn on your camera when it's your turn um, if you are comfortable doing so. All right, so our first group are our principals. We did invite uh, two principals from each of our three zones. So I'm going to ask those principals to introduce themselves and I'm going to start with uh, Heather Denmeyer. Good evening, thank you for the opportunity to serve on um, this council. I am a elementary school principal at 7th District Elementary School. I'm also a proud graduate of Baltimore County Public Schools, and I'm happy to be part of Team BCPS. Um, those are my connections to BCPS. Um, as far as top priority, regarding BCPS and equity is to continue the work that is grounded in the policy that we are um, discussing this evening and providing for all of my students that safe and supportive environment that includes um, interrupting beliefs that have been part of the system, um, institutionalized beliefs, that have shown themselves to be damaging to students and looking at how we can um, examine personal bias and system bias and move forward so that all voices are heard 
and supported and valued. All right, thank you. Uh, next we have uh, Aaron O'Toole Trebus. Hi, um, I'm Aaron O'Toole Trebus. I'm principal at Parkville Middle School. I've been an educator for 28 years. I have been with Baltimore County for 23 of those years. I um, am a former English teacher, special educator, and assistant principal. I am work in a school that has become increasingly diverse over the last 15 or so years. And like Heather, um, I am honored to be part of um, this committee and to have a voice as principal. Um, I want to start by identifying myself as a white person who um, started as an educator, uh, believing that um, I didn't hold racist beliefs, believing that um, I was colorblind, believe, having holding all kinds of beliefs that uh, many white educators hold and that are problematic to our students of color. And through the work that we have done in the county um, with um, exploring um, through my own personal work as a graduate student and through my work um, with the county and the equity work that they've done even beginning prior to the establishment of our policy, I have learned and grown um, in ways that um, I believe are beneficial to my students and um, to their performance. And so I my top priority is to um, stress to the leaders of the system that um, my learning has been exponential in this work and I am vested in the work and believe that it is in the best interest of our teachers and our students and their achievement. And so I want us to continue to move forward to look at those practices, um, to embrace the experiences that our students um, have in the building and to understand that race is a factor in their lives and, and often a negative factor. Um, and, and when, and in their academic performance. And I want to keep uncovering those things and working together in ways that will allow all of our students to um, achieve at the level and in the ways that they should be able to. So thank you. Thank you. All right, next, uh, Kevin Jennings. Good evening, um, my name is Kevin Jennings Jr. I am the principal of the New Northeast Elementary School that is going to be was being built um, in the Rosedale Perry Hall area. I have been an educator for 16 years. I began in Montgomery County for one year and then came to Baltimore County, came back home um, because I am also a graduate of Baltimore County Public Schools. I went to Carver Center for Arts and Technology. Um, and so I am very passionate about this work. Um, personally, around um, my priority, it is to truly be a change agent, um, especially um, changing the narrative of the absence black male. Um, right now, I'm the only black male principal in um, Baltimore County on the elementary school level. Um, and so I truly um, believe in making sure that it is a presence and trying to be a part of that, um, being an example, especially for those students that look like myself, um, and very passionate about the black males in education and just trying to help change that narrative. Systematically, I want to help um, be the voice, um, help be a um, an encourager, um, an, empower, an empowerer um, to help leaders, teachers, students, and community members to understand the importance of um, especially um, the students of color, but really trying to make sure that we understand what equity truly means and how that shows up in our educational system. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Dr. Monica Sample. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Monica Sample. I'm the principal of Overly High School. Um, I have been with Baltimore County Public Schools for 25 years, um, 10 years as a teacher, 10 years as an assistant principal, and the last six years at Overly High School. Um, I'm very passionate about children, putting them first um, as our primary client. Um, and my top priority regarding BCPS and equity is to make sure that we are meeting students' needs based on their circumstances. 
um, and that we are also making it a priority to continue to grow on the equity journey um, that we have already embarked on. And we're doing that throughout all of our schools and all of our offices within Baltimore County. Thank you for the opportunity for letting me serve. Thank you. Um, next, uh, Frank Dunlap. All right. Next, Lauren Tillman. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm sorry, my camera never works at home. Um, I am so thankful to be here. Good evening. Um, I am the proud principal of Scotts Branch Elementary School. This is my fifth year. I was the assistant principal at Pleasant Plains Elementary School in 2013, and then I spent two years in Montgomery County, and I also came back home, like Kevin said, um, to be a principal. So um, always keeping equity at the forefront. I am the, you know, keeping the main thing, the main thing, girl. Um, our school really does apply our equity lens throughout all things. Um, and I think one of the things that we somewhat do differently um, as, as well is just kind of keeping the historical context alive and uh, recognizing where we were in order to move forward, where we come from in order to, to move towards excellence. Um, we uplift excellence even through building building leaders. Um, and so that's kind of the conversations I have with our young staff and growing our leaders and growing our staff members around equity because our university model that we have are with teachers who have never experienced this work. So I think on a systematic lens, on a systematic level, um, doing PDs for the system, doing um, work around equity is all that I embody. So I truly am excited to be here with all of you um, to get this work done. So thanks. Thank you. And thank you to all of our principals. Um, our next group are our teachers. So we also invited two teachers for each of our three zones. Uh, first, Sherelle Jones. Sorry, I'm here. My, I forgot I'm on my home computer, which is not touch screen. Sorry. I am Cheryl Jones. I teach at Timber Grove Elementary School. I teach fifth grade. Currently, I've been at Timber Grove for this is year eight, but it's year 17 teaching. I am also a PAR panel teacher, have been since the inception of that program, and currently the co chair of our education. Um, our equity squad at my school. My goal, my top priority right now is the education for liberation and justice for all people. Our, my partner and I, who we co-chair the equity squad, we changed our name of the entire squad to the Education for Liberation Committee because that is now our goal. We are no longer working just towards equity, we're working towards justice and liberation. And I think that sums up what my top priority is. We are making small changes at our school and evaluating ourselves first, looking within, especially this year, it's a deep dive within ourselves that we are facilitating so that we can look outside of ourselves and then begin making changes that will have an impact on every student that crosses our path, whether they be in our classroom or in our building or in the county itself. Thank you. Uh, next, Sam Tillman. Bianca Crockett. Dr. Kennedy, I believe that um, when this meeting was set up that external presenters uh, were not given the authority to be able to unmute. So you may be calling on individuals that were invited from an external standpoint um, that will not be able to, to fix their microphone. All right. Thank you, Mr. Um, Corns. I, I do and, see some activity. That you, yeah, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, um, it, it is not a technical possibility to be able to unmute someone remotely. Uh, uh, let me. Um, who? Uh, let me. Let me try one thing, um, Mr. Andy. Who? Who did you just call out? Uh, Sam Tillman. Um, and I will say he is uh, one of our BCBS teachers. He did not answer a roll call. Um, if I remember correctly, I can ask Ms. Fast to confirm. So I think Mr. Tillman's not here. 
Um, so we're still with our teachers, but once we finish our teachers, we'll get into that that external you know area that you spoke of. And I, I can see in the chat we already do have some concerns there. Yep. So yeah, I think I um, I, I don't mean to belabor your meeting. Let me um, uh, speak to. Um, I, I'm, I see Lena. Uh, I'm going to say, is it Fugit? Um, I'm going to attempt to. Um, I'm going to flip her over to a different role. Lena, can you unmute now? Yes, I could unmute. Thank you. OK, great. And then let me um, I'm, I'm sorry to waylay you, uh, Dr. Haney, let me let me check one other. OK, OK, thank you, Mr. Collins. Yeah. My apologies. <clears throat> just to recap we were going through the introductions and i believe were we on the teachers who have joined us is that correct mr handy yes miss scott and we have it looks like uh miss crockett was up next we have four teachers and then we will um have some external uh, you know members that are external to bcps Got it. OK, so I didn't know if any of the other four members were able to unmute or able to speak. Um, sure. So would, would you, Do, oh, uh, yeah. Dr. St Scott Krugman, I'm going to, to make a shift. And um, can you now see if he can unmute? I can. Thank you. OK, great. Uh, Dr. Handy, you can continue on. I, I see what the fix is and it doesn't require uh, individuals to uh, intervene. I'll work through and take care of this while you're uh, continuing. My apologies for the interruption. Perfect. No, thank you, Mr. Corns, for the yep. technical assistance. Thank you. Ms. Scott, is it okay if I continue? Yes, please. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, next, we have uh, Bianca Crockett. Hi, I'm Bianca Crockett. I'm um, a kindergarten teacher at Battle Grove Elementary School. I've been with the county for um, 11 years, four years at West Towson, and I'm in my seventh year at Battle Grove. Um, personally, my priority as um, the only one of very few teachers of color in my school is to um, constantly disrupt the false narrative. Um, I like to say always and always. Um, always ask the question, how do you know when people are speaking of students and the parents or our community? Um, systemically, my priority um, is just to make sure that students have equitable access um, at the elementary school level, uh, um, access to everything really, um, especially the BIPOC population. Um, and I do that by disrupting the false narratives once again that are created by staff and perpetuated by staff um, by having them really try to find gems even in the muddiest waters. Um, so I work diligently to continue to tear down the walls that separate them and us at my school. Thank you. Uh, next, Maggie Cummins. Hi, I'm Maggie Cummins. I've been with the county for 14 years. Um, I am a teacher at Chesapeake High School. Previous to that, I was a stat teacher and instructional coach for eight years. Um, so really, I'm interested in disrupting and supporting teachers along this equity journey and making sure that their voices are amplified and that we are no longer marginalizing our black and brown teachers um, while also doing the same for our students. I'm teaching living science this year and it has just been great to be back into the classroom, but I see those disruptions that are needed and I'm excited to be a part of this committee to commit to disrupting those. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Uh, next, Monica joins Massey. Um, Brianna Ross. 
Good evening, everyone. Um, first, thank you so much for, for having me here. My name is Brianna Ross. I am the Social Studies Department Chair at Deer Park Middle Magnet. Um, I am now my seventh year in Baltimore County. My first three years I spent um, teaching fifth grade at Scotts Branch Elementary, and I've been at Deer Park for the last four years teaching world history and American history. Um, and I'm also the Baltimore County and Maryland Public School Teacher of the Year. Um, as, as it relates to, to my priorities, one thing, um, and I think Maggie said it as well, I'm really passionate about supporting teachers. Um, I think oftentimes we get into this work and we're, we're so ready to jump to what we can do for students and how we can interrogate practices and systems. But I think this equity work is really about starting with ourselves. And so I'm really passionate about helping teachers interrogate themselves first and looking at our own biases, our own practices, our own beliefs, and looking at who we are and how we show up in the classroom before we can impact change with our students. Um, and then concurrently as a history teacher, especially surrounding some of the conversations we've been having as a county, um, as, as a state and as a nation, really, especially around what we're teaching in classrooms, I'm really passionate about making sure that our curriculum is representative of all of our students, um, that we're really including those diverse narratives and perspectives, and that we're telling the truth, that we're being honest with our students and, and giving them the skills to be able to hear the truth and tell the truth themselves. Um, thank you again for having me today. Tonight. Thank you. Next, we have um, our students. So we're actually going to start with um, our student member of the board, who is also a member of this committee. Um, and uh, I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Thomas, for your introduction. Thank you, Mr. Handy. I want to start off by thanking all the teachers and principals for all the things that you said tonight. Um, it's so inspiring to hear all the uh, top priorities you have and I really love to hear them. But hi everyone, my name is Christian Thomas. I am the student member of the board for Baltimore County Public Schools, representing the 111,000 students on the Board of Education. Um, I'm a member of the Equity Committee, but I'm also honored to be a part of this Equity Council here. And my top priority with our Equity Committee has to be kind of looking at the, the inequitable disparities that are within some of our programs we have in our magnet programs and access to magnet programs, as well as within our curriculum for students and kind of realizing uh, where who's missing in our curriculum and kind of uh, dismantling that and figuring out how we can bring them to the forefront of the curriculum if they are missing. So thank you all, and I'm really excited to be here with you. Thank you. Uh, so we did invite uh, two students from each of our uh, geographic zones, so we'll hear from them at this time. Uh, students were either uh, from middle school or high school. So we have uh, first is Avery Webb. Okay. How about Kelvin Ganesh? Right, Marcellus McQueen. All right, I'm here. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Marcellus McQueen. I attend Renaissance High School. I am a senior, and I am a intern with the Department of Equ uh, Equity and Cultural Proficiency, and I serve on the Baltimore County Student Council Equi Diversity and Equity Committee. Um, and my top priority for the for this week, I would say, is getting more men or more black men that look like me inside of the education field. Um, I've always been passionate about education and always wanted to be a teacher. And not being able to see men like me um, definitely threw me off a lot. But being able to attend Randallstown, where there's um, a wide range of African American males who are in different capacities, um, definitely inspired me to keep going. So I'm at this mission now, trying to get my friends to understand that education is a great field and when we need black men in the classroom um black we all, we all know that black students relate better with black teachers so thank you all right next we have uh representatives from offices in bcps a few selected offices first uh, representing the office of title one uh, michelle stansbury Oh, I'm sorry. Hello, everyone. I am Shell Stansberry. I work in the Title I office along with homeless programs and community schools. Um, I've been with BCPS for 23 years, was a teacher, a mentor, and have been in the Title I office for 13 of those 23 years. Um, we are focused in our office on looking at the intersection between race, poverty, and meeting basic needs of students and families. And so that is the lens that I will bring to these conversations. 
Thank you. Next we have um, from Human Resources, Maria Lowry. Good evening. I'm Maria Lowry, Assistant Superintendent, HR, Recruitment and Staffing. Previously, I served as um, the supervisor over high schools in Baltimore County, and I've served as a high school and middle school principal, as well as a teacher in the system. So with, with my work in the Office of HR, um, I find myself often um, leaning back on, on that lens um, as a school-based administrator. Uh, what were my needs and what was I, what was I trying to find and look for um, in staff for the students that I served? And trying to make sure that um, through those hiring processes, we were looking and searching for uh, teachers that would um, give our students that representation that they were looking for, that voice that they were looking for. Um, I've heard a couple of people so far talk about the difficulty of finding um, black male teachers, um, and it's also the concern um, that efforts need to be put into trying um, harder to retain our teachers of color. Um, so part of that work has been done in collaboration with um, Doug and his team, we've engaged in some state conferences to try to learn from our teachers of color. Why are you still here in Baltimore County? What keeps you here? And what would what would be your recommendation for how we can support our teachers? Um, we want to hear directly from the teachers. Um, what can we do um, to attract um, new teachers as well as to keep the teachers we have? But we also realize those same resources we've provided in the past may not be meeting the needs of all of our teachers. So what do we need to do differently? So that's what um, I would hope to offer to this, this group. Thank you. Thank you. So our next uh, group of council members are representing the Baltimore County Area Education Advisory Councils. And we'll start with Donna Sibley. Good evening. Thank you so much uh, for having me. I am currently the coordinator for the five area education advisory councils. We are um, directed by policy 1230. Um, we work with the board. We advising the board on the uh, various. Not problems, but communications from all of the different communities within all of the areas. Uh, previously to this, I was the chair of the Central Area Education Advisory Council, and at that same time, I taught in Baltimore County, and for about eight or nine years, I was a parent service representative with the um, parent service support group that was in the Department of Professional Development. Thank you, and my focus is to remove any barriers from any of our children that would prevent them from being all that they can be. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, Marlena Purcell Colleton. Next, uh, Clifford Collins. Okay, next, Dr. Bosch Farone. Next, uh, Tiffany Stith. Okay. Next, uh, Jackie Brewster. Yes, I'm Jackie Brewster and I um, represent the Southeast Area Advisory Council. So the um, the students and staff in the Essex, Dundalk, um, Edgemere, Sparrows Point areas. And so so really I'm here to learn and to um, to to help with, um, you know, issues in, in our areas. So thank you. Thank you. OK, next we have uh, representing the NAACP, Lena Polite. 
Hi, good evening, um, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. My name is Lena Polite. I am the um, education chair for Baltimore County in AACP, and I'm also a parent of a ninth grade student um, in Baltimore County Schools. And I would just like to echo um, some of the points um, for priorities made by Ms. Lowry with the um, retaining um, black teachers, black male teachers in the district with um, recruitment, with um, hiring, and also with making sure that they're equitably dispersed throughout the county and not just on, you know, certain sides of town. I also, um, with Mr. Thomas and just making sure that the uh, magnet programming is equitable um, and that we're, it's reflecting the district as a whole. And um, most important, well, um, we talk about lots of things with equity and achievement gap and those types of things, but I also would like to see from this committee some actionable items. And so, you know, we kind of talk about these things. We, you know, already has their, you know, concerns with equity and their points that they want to make, but what are the actionable items that we can actually start to see a difference in some of these um, priorities that we're listing? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, from the GTCAC, which is Gifted and Talented Citizens Advisory Council, uh, Dr. Zamira Simpkins. Good evening. Uh, I'm Dr. Zamira Simpkins. I represent the Baltimore County Gifted and Talented Advisory uh, Council, and I'm here to learn more about what BCPS would like to do uh, with respect to ensuring equity. Um, I'm also representing here my own children, uh, so as a parent stakeholder as well. And the word equity has been bubbling up quite a bit lately. Um, I have been very impressed with the definition of equity that BCP has put forward in their strategic plan, the recent strategic plan as meeting every student's needs. And so I want to really make sure that this is this committee is more uh, than about equity in racial distribution. Uh, it also is about making sure whether it's a 2E student that they get what they need, whether it's a teacher uh, who has maybe some disability that they are given equitable access to be able to provide the services to the students. So I, I really would like to see diversity, inclusion and equity uh, being considered in a broader context uh, than just focusing on particular types of equity. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, next, representing the BCPS Health Council, Dr. Scott Krugman. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Dr. Scott Krugman. I am a pediatrician at Sinai Hospital of Baltimore and just started as chair of the Baltimore County Schools Health Council. We haven't even had a meeting yet. This is my first official um, presence for all of you, and I have no idea what I'm supposed to do or how it's supposed to work, but I feel like I'm here to be a guidance if there are health issues related to equity, as there often are, because there's disproportionate um, disease burden in underrepresented minorities, especially in Baltimore County. And I can be a reference to talk about the impact of health and how we're delivering that in the county. But as of now, that's about all I can say, because this is my first day. Thank you and welcome. <laughs> OK, next, uh, the request made by the committee was for a uh, representative of the ESOL Advisory Council, and I there might be a council being formed. I'm uh, not exactly sure, so I'm actually turning over to uh, Dr. Erin Sullivan uh, for her introduction, and um, I don't know if there's anything you want to say about the council, but I'll turn it over to Dr. Sullivan at this time for her introduction. Hi. Hi, thank you. Um, I believe there was a council years ago, but that hasn't been um, functioning. So we have been discussing um, bringing that back. So Doug um, asked me to recommend someone from the from that group, but as that group isn't functioning, I decided to join. So my name is Erin Sullivan. I'm the ESOL coordinator in Baltimore County. Um, prior to um, this, is my sixth year in the county. Prior to working in the county, I was in Anne Arundel County as a high school ESOL teacher for 10 years, and I was an ESOL specialist in Baltimore City. Um, 
And I have really dedicated my career to serving English learners because I believe um, strongly that immigrant and immigrant origin students bring great assets to our community, um, but that these assets are often overlooked. So my top priority in working in this group is just working to shift that narrative so that my students are viewed from the asset perspective. And to me, what that would mean is not only are they striving academically, but that they have equal access to all BCPS planning, um, all BCPS programming, including advanced academics, magnet, special education, CTE, um, because right now it is difficult for a lot of English learners to access these programs, um, as well as equitable access to all extracurricular activities also. So thank you for asking for someone from um, this lens to be part of the group. Thank you. OK, next we have uh, from the Special Education Citizens Advisory Council or CCAC. Uh, do we have anyone from from that council from CCAC? Yes, hi, this is Julie Zielinski. It's nice to be here. Thank you for including us. Um, I am the co-chair of the Special Education Citizens Advisory Committee along with Megan Stewart Sicking. And um, we are definitely looking at equity through the lens of access to special education services. Um, we would look at this to make sure that students throughout the entire distribution of our county have equal opportunity to get those services and supports that are needed um, if they do have a special need. And the other piece of that is we want to make sure that all of those students have access to all programs through Baltimore County, um, whether it be social programs, sports programs, um, academic programs that they are not overlooked um, throughout our entire system. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next um, for the BCPS PTA Council, um, President Jane Lee. All right. Uh, our next group are our parent representatives. So we invited uh, one parent representative from each zone. You've heard we have some um, folks who are wearing the hat of a parent along with the other role for which they were invited. Uh, but our next group was invited specifically as parent representatives. We'll start with uh, Abir Shanawi. Good evening, everyone. My name is Abir Shanawi. I am a former BCPS employee proudly served as a middle school teacher, and I also worked for the Office of Social Studies as a resource teacher. I'm currently Associate Director of Program for a nonprofit titled Reimagining Migration. Um, as uh, Doug Handy said, I am also a parent, and my connection to BCPS as a parent as well as a former employee, but my top priority regarding BCPS and equity um, is a number of layers. Number one is addressing the needs of our Muslim and Arab students, and I say both because I don't think people truly understand that there's a difference because we also have Arab students who are not Muslim, but are also targeted under the umbrella of Muslim students. The social emotional needs of our Muslim and Arab students who are also refugees and immigrants coming from war-torn countries and are put in schools and populations that don't address their needs and look at them as different students because they don't understand them, which also leads to my last point of curriculum and being able to have curriculum that reflects all of our students. And I particularly say Arab and Muslim students because in the curriculum, they're either hyper visible, if we talk about certain topics, or totally invisible where they don't see themselves, but also where we can have curriculum that does reflect all students, but that's written by teachers and educators and consultants that reflect the students as well, and that have curriculum writers that are also reflective of our students and um, meaningful curriculum that reflects all of our students in our county as well. And thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, next, Lisa Norton. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lisa Norton, um, and I just want to thank you all for inviting me, and I'm so excited to finally share in this space. I'm a former Baltimore County public school educator, and currently I serve as a diversity, equity, inclusion, and social justice administrator in a non-public school. But today I come to you um, as a parent representing the East Zone, extremely proud mother of two brilliant girls who attend um, Honeygo Elementary, their fifth grade, I have a daughter in fifth grade, and my younger daughter is in second grade. 
So personally and professionally, my top priorities is um, I just want to piggyback on what a lot of people said. It's really an honest assessment and understanding of the historical and social political context that we are sitting in regarding race and racism so that we can really hone in and improve the educational outcomes and experiences, access to resources and sense of belonging for all students. For, for me, I particularly my lens is looking at students of color and I'm particularly um, interested in gifted and talented education as it relates to students of color and the excellence gap because we pay a lot of attention on um, rightfully so to um, the disparate outcomes for students that are, are having the most academic struggles, but we are missing the forest for the trees when we don't look at the other end of who we um, don't see as well and what students don't have access and what barriers are there on um, the advanced academics end. So in addition, um, I think it's also important and want to just underscore that, that we really have an urgent need to find sustained solutions to recruitment and retention issues that we have um, for teachers of color. Um, and I'll just speak specifically for Baltimore County because you know that's where we're sitting in. And although it's a national issue, we really have to pay attention to the reasons and how and why teachers are screened out, pushed out, worn out, and how that impacts our recruitment and um, retention efforts. So once again, I am ready and willing to get to work and I'm excited to be here and ready for us to activate and find solutions around all of our efforts. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next, Abby Plusson. All right, so next, um, the committee had requested uh, a member of the uh, LGBTQIA plus committee, and I will tell you, um, the Office of School Counseling is heading up the effort and it's in partnership with my department, Equity and Cultural Proficiency, to stand up an LGBTQIA um, QIA plus work group. And in doing so, there have been some um, folks that we would like to invite to be a part of that work group as we form it and um, have invited um, those folks to join us this evening. So uh, one would be uh, Saul Davis. Let's see, am I, am I unmuted there? Yep, Can't so we can see okay. you and hear you, yes. All right, thank you. Uh, my name's Saul Davis, he, him pronouns. I have two kids in BCPS. I just moved here uh, in December of 2020 from Tucson, Arizona. Um, and I'm, I'm a cis, straight, white man. Uh, so it's a, a little awkward to be in the LGBTQIA plus See, though I do have a deep investment uh, in that work, um, I'm just inspired to hear about everyone's commitments and, and work through these introductions. Uh, I'm invested in the full spectrum of equity considerations and, and believe that equity should be considered through an intersectional lens that sees the various identities uh, that an individual holds as they move through the world. And I guess with that preamble, I'll just say that I, I connected with the Equity Advisory Council through my commitments to helping to cultivate gender affirming practices and, and cultures in schools. Uh, I'd also just continue the theme of disruption that we've had through these introductions to say that uh, I hope to disrupt tendencies to see the world through a, a gender binary lens. Um, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to join this council. Thank you. Next, Shane Jensen. There we go. Um, greetings, everyone. Shane Jensen, he, him. Um, I am the music specialist uh, for Baltimore County Public Schools. Um, a, a primary task that I have had is, is over the years um, is establishing our um, LGBTQIA um, affinity group, especially for our focusing on our leadership um, and a lot of the, the dissertation I work I do um, is really around the adults. Um, although we really put a lot of our work into the students, a lot of the work that I do goes beyond to our adults, to our you know educators, to our leaders. 
to really just affirm them. So Saul, I want to thank you um, um, for using your voice, but your advocacy in it to help disrupt um, as we look through it and look at our, our curriculum, again, beyond the binary, um, to really affirm our trans students, our non-binary students, um, and just to expose people to um, shifts in language, in policy, um, little things that can be done to be inclusive, to bring more visibility, to bring more representation into it. Because, you know, as a gay white male leader, um, my work is to, to really, again, affirm leadership in there um, that can lead authentically um, so students can live and, you know, be their authentic self. So thank you. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, uh, we did invite a representative from the Baltimore County Diversity, Inclusion and Equity Community Advisory Council. Um, is anyone here to represent that council? OK, so before we move on, I want to thank all of our uh, council members. You have been invited to join. Hopefully you'll stay with us on this journey. I want to thank you um, for those introductions. Hopefully you understand why this was at the top of our agenda and why it was so important. We, we had to know who was in the room. We had to hear the authentic voice of those in the room, in the space. And this is what this council is all about, um, hearing these multiple perspectives, um, hearing folks in, in their identity, showing up in their full selves, um, talking about their, their top priority from their perspective, speaking their truth around equity and BCPS. So um, that, that part of our meeting, absolutely essential. So thank you um, for sharing and thank you for listening to those as they shared. And um, at this point, we'll move to our next slide, please, Ms. Fast. All right, so you know who we are as, as, a, as a council. Now let's talk about how we ground the work that we're setting out to do. So the work we do in BCPS is guided by our strategic plan. And that strategic plan is called the compass, our pathway to excellence. So hopefully as you heard from the council members, you can see how it aligns to the work in the compass. And if we, we really frame out all the content in the compass and then in, in four major areas. So we have learning, accountability, and results. We are a school system. Our focus is on student achievement. Next, we go to safe and supportive environment. And we cannot deliver on the learning, the teaching and learning, if we don't have that safe and supportive environment for our students every day, for our staff, for all that come into our space, for all of our stakeholders. And I'm sorry, I said four, we have five, five focal areas. We have operational excellence. So talking about the way we, we go about doing our work and making sure we strive for excellence every day in doing that. Next, we talk about community engagement and partnerships. So again, it's very intentional that this council is comprised of those internal to BCPS and our external stakeholders as well. And that all aligns to the compass. Next, we talk about high performing workforce and alignment of human capital. You heard comments on uh, recruitment and retention of teachers of color and, and other aspects around this part of the compass. So these are the five areas of the compass. Hopefully you are familiar with it. Um, I do invite you to to dig into these materials. Um, the teacher in me does want to assign a little homework. Um, you'll see that uh, we do have grounding documents, uh, grounding parts of, of, of our work. So you'll see me invite you to, to read the compass, align it to your beliefs, to your to what you're passionate about and see that we have these things in place in our strategic plan. And the reason we have this council in place is to help us act, you know, actionalize what we've put into our plan. All right, next slide, please. Also, our work is grounded in, in policy as, as everything really in BCPS. So if you go through the policy numerical order, the first policy you're going to encounter is policy 0100, uh, which is equity. And here you just have a screenshot. Again, I'll invite you to uh, seek out uh, the policies on our board site, become familiar with uh, policy 0100, um, it was recently updated, I believe the end of uh, September, if I'm correct. Uh, but you'll you'll find, again, the work that we're looking to do in this council is grounded in our policy um, around equity. So please become familiar with that. And I think you will find that a lot of what you heard today from our members 
certainly, again, is grounded in and aligns to what we have in policy. Next slide, please. All right, next, this is exciting um, because if I look at the work of the, the committee, this was something we, we led with um, to start our school year. So um, this is a equity committee resolution. And the idea around this was really to take that equity policy that we just uh, briefly talked about and then to bring that into what you see in front of you. And this is a document that is in the works. And once we are um, where we want to be, it will actually reside in each of our schools. So the idea is we take our equity policy. Uh, th this committee, the equity committee has come up with this resolution. You see the graphic comparing equality to equity. Um, and then you see the verbiage below that. And then again, this would be a 12 by 18 document that would be displayed um, in each of our schools. So when stakeholders walk into the building, um, students, staff, faculty, uh, our, our principals, assistant principals, everyone within that building um, knows that this is what BCPS um, is, is standing on as foundational. And we're aiming to get that out um, aiming to get that out by American Education Week. And I've been in communication with our um, communication and copy print folks, and it looks like we're going to be able to make that. So, um, Ms. Scott, I do have a question in the chat. Um, is it OK if I respond to that question before I move forward? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, Mr. Jensen, I'll invite you to unmute if you like, or I can I can respond to what you put in the chat. I'll, just, I'll leave it up to you. Yep. Um, Doug, it was actually the previous slide. Um, just in the equity policy. OK. Um, yep. It just regards the use of um, the binary language um, as we shift to use singular they um, or the students. Um, I think there was a, a I can't remember, like a he slash her. Um, just as we're working in policies to go and it, it, you know, it follows everything. It follows the new APA. I'm um, just really working on inclusive language or we're still leaving individuals out that do not identify in the binary. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for for uh, for servicing that too, Mr. Jensen. I appreciate that. Um, and, and that's the type of inter, you know interaction I hope we have as advisory and and committee and I serve as your you know one of your uh, staff liaisons. But again, bringing that perspective um, that we need um, for awareness as we move forward. Uh, Mr. Handy, I'm sorry, I can't comment, so I just wanted to interject something, if I may. I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, we were asking everybody to put their questions in the chat, but are you saying you're unable to do so? I'm now? not able. I don't have a chat button for mine. Even under more actions, I don't have a chat button. Okay, because I think if you click the three buttons and then you're saying there's no chat. Okay. OK, so um, yes, if you could just say your name so that we can make sure <laughs> that we know who's asking the question. Sure, yeah, I don't I don't have a chat button, so sorry to interrupt, but uh, Abir Shanawi, I'm um, on the parent uh, council, but I also would like if Thank it you. could be added that um, religion, because we do have students who cover or wear particular religious garb that really makes them stand out. So I think that would be an important piece to also add and address to this piece of policy in this poster. Okay. All right. And um, uh, Ms. Sabira, you were speaking in regards to the poster or the policy? The poster. And okay. um, I got to go back to the policy and read it. I'm not sure if it had it. I know in the past, but this poster doesn't include it. If that could also okay. be, yes. So thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Handy, for jumping in there. No, no, no problem at all, Ms. Scott. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Yep. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you. All right. So let's go to the next slide, please. All right, so next we have our um, MAVE equity questions. I'm actually going to table this um, and circle back to it another time because it really does deserve a uh, little more in-depth discussion and just you know, being conscientious of time, um, we're going to move forward uh, so we make sure we do close out on time. So we, we will uh, return to this at a future uh, meeting. 
and the committee has already been working with these, but I'll, I'll introduce it to the council at a later time. So uh, next slide, please. All right, so next up, and this is one of the, um, I guess one of the items that really had the, the uh, committee interested in setting up a council. Um, if you look at where we are, uh, we're we're at this we're in the the planning stages for our FY 2023 budget. So gathering feedback on the proposed budget is going to be going to be um, key. And Dr. Yarbrough, would you like to um, speak to this before I move on? Sure. Um, thank you. Uh, again, I thank everyone for participating, and we really wanted to hear the feedback and input that all of the members of the council had for equity related budget priorities. So what we would like to do is to invite people to put some items in the chat. Um, any consideration that you would like us, we will be recording and taking back to Dr. Williams and his team for consideration um, for inclusion. And as you put things in the chat, uh, we will be inviting people to unmute and share a little bit more so we can have some context to create a fully bodied uh, summary to share. Great, thank you for that, Dr. Yarbrough. Um, you can go ahead, Mr. Handy. Okay, thank you, Ms. Scott. And I, I just want to point out, I'm looking in the chat. Um, I know uh, Ms. Chanel said she has some issues. It looks like Dr. Simpkins um, might also be missing the chat. I'm just skimming through. So I know some of our folks who joined outside of BCPS um, may be having trouble with the chat. So if that's the case, we'll make sure we gather that feedback um, that Dr. Yarbrough spoke to. Um, You'll, you'll be able to contact me directly um, and we'll make sure it gets to um, our committee. All right, next slide, please. All right, so next up, um, we want to continue this 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 dialogue and continue to work together um, in, in this council setting. So want to propose uh, a meeting schedule that would be quarterly. So at this rate, our next meeting would be in January, followed by a March meeting and then a May meeting. Um, we also have uh, the time. So tonight we were scheduled for 6 to 7.30. Um, if you all can share some feedback on that. And then we're proposing that we remain virtual um, really for the foreseeable future, or really I would say indefinitely. So um, this is what we're proposing as far as uh, subsequent meetings. So feel free to share some feedback on that. Um, if you can chat, please do so. Um, if you can't chat, you might not be, you probably can't raise your hand either, but uh, Ms. Scott, I'll ask you if you can just bear with me while we gather feedback from those that cannot chat. Um, and then one other thing, if you could add to this while you're sharing feedback, uh, we also want to gather some of your priorities. So um, you spoke to that in your introduction, but as a council member, thinking about these subsequent meetings, um, some feedback on what we propose for a schedule um, and format, and then um, if you'd like to share some of your priorities um, as we move forward, please do so. So this is Ms. Scott. So I guess the next item for um, is for the council to provide feedback to the committee members um, as uh, Mr. Handy is, is facilitating, but basically feedback on what you all have heard, but then also feedback as Dr. Yarborough had mentioned as far as um, the budget. And um, could you briefly go over the timeline for the budget um, or if there's staff here that could that could explain that because as I understand it, the budget is being drafted now or, or, or rather um, will be drafted later this month. So if there's feedback or information or ways that they feel um, uh, they would like to make suggestions as far as um, uh, making sure that um, we are aware of, that would be um, something that would be good to share with us. Ms. Scott, you are absolutely correct. I think there are a series of meetings planned for the next few weeks where people are moving forward with identifying budget priorities and then Dr. Williams and team will be able to sit down and make some decisions. So to the degree that people can either share in this meeting or follow up in writing to share some considerations, uh, within the next two weeks, that would be great. So we can move them forward on behalf of the advisory council. Thank you. And um, if people wanted to email in something, is there a, a particular email or, um, and maybe we could share that um, on the screen. 
so everyone could have that in case they didn't have any suggestions tonight. Yes, the next slide has uh, Mr. Handy's email address on it. Wonderful, thank you. You're welcome. Miss Scott, I do have, there's another question in the chat. Uh, may I reply to uh, Lisa Norton's question? Oh, yes, please. Thank you. So uh, Ms. Norton had a question about work sessions uh, in between quarterly meetings. And I'll, I'll offer this and, you know, um, Ms. Scott and, and the committee members, of course, I yield uh, to you all. Uh, even though I don't believe we'll have any work sessions, remember the the equity committee does meet monthly. And I think observing the committee proceedings, those meetings, and then as Dr. Yarbrough stated, my uh, email address is available to you. If you want to uh, email me with anything to bring to the committee, I can certainly do that in between council meetings. Um, and that's typically how um, you know we we interface in between um, the committee meetings as well. So bottom line, I'm, I'm glad to um, take any uh, communication from any council members um, and and bring that to the the committee. All right, and thank you. It looks like there's another question in there from Miss Cummings. She said, yeah. what is the difference between a council and a committee? <laughs> Would you like to take that one, Miss Scott, or do you, <laughs> do you want me to take that one? You're doing a wonderful job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Just, just stop me if I go off track. So, um, so uh, Ms. Cummins, the if you look at the board, uh, we have a full board of education, and then with the board, there are several committees. So the equity committee um, is a standing committee of the board of education, and um, there are several other committees. I'm not going to name them because I don't want to leave any out and get any wrong. And a lot of our members serve on multiple committees. Um, what I'm very excited about is that in the spirit of gaining multiple perspectives, this particular committee, the equity committee, requested an advisory council to really bring those multiple perspectives around matters such as budget and, and, and matters of equity in general. So um, I think that's, I guess I'm engaged by that because I'm even thinking about my past you know, in career and technical education, we had an advisory. So I think it's a powerful tool to get stakeholder input. Um, I will invite, I see Ms. Pastor came on camera. I don't know if, um, you know, Ms. Scott or Ms. Pastor or any other uh, committee members want to, to, to respond to that question. Yes, I can um, respond to it. This is Ms. Scott, I can actually on camera. Um, basically a committee is a, a, a committee um, that's, um, part of one of the committees, a standing committee, as Mr. Handy said, um, that's under the board. So the board has several committees, policy, um, audit, and then this is the equity committee. This was um, actually a very new committee. So out of this committee, then we've come up with a council and basically an advisory council to help advise us as we work through making um, sure that we address equitable solutions at BCPS. So um, th that's that's where the where the difference is between the council and the committee. The committee is comprised of board members, whereas the council is comprised of stakeholders. Um, and it, it, uh, hopefully hopefully that was uh, um, that ad addressed your question. And um, one of the things I just would say is that the equity committee um, it's when we held our first meeting. The equity committee held its first inaugural meeting in June of 2020. And one of the first things that we did was create, um, we had an equity audit done, which audited the equity in BCPS across all areas, um, uh, uh, across race, across, um, uh, let's see, what was it? Um, English language, um, and zone um, all schools and that's something that i would um, encourage everyone to read it's on our website it's under leadership at the very top and then it says um, um, equity metrics and it goes to the very heart of some of the things that you all are talking about and um, that we are aiming to address so i i guess that was kind of a longer explanation um, so <laughs> 
And um, Mr. Handy, are you there? Because it looks like there's another question. It says advise versus enact. Yes, Ms. Scott, I'm here. And that was Ms. Jones' response to Ms. Cummins' question, if I understand. So um, I think that you could, well, I'll yield to you all again as, as committee members, but that might be a fair assessment. So she's saying, I guess the uh, committee enacts and the it, the council is an advi and it advises. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. But I'd like to look at us working as a, as a team together. Okay, and then Ms. Scott, it looks like, okay. so I'm going through, we do have some comment around budget. Um, budget priorities, but I do see Mr. Thomas there as well. Um, yeah, I wanted to recognize Mr. Thomas mm -hmm. and then we can um, go to the, net, to the next one. Um, Mr. Thomas, okay. are you there? Yes, thank you. Um, just for clarification, uh, th this time right now when we're providing feedback, uh, we're really able to provide feedback on the proposed schedule as well as the uh, budget priorities, correct? That is correct. Awesome. All right, so when I am looking at the feedback now, the quarterly meetings that we have in January, March, and May, I mean, just from the conversation we had earlier today when we were all introducing ourselves, I, I feel as though maybe we should have monthly meetings instead of quarterly meetings. Have a meeting in that uh, that February month and in that April month as well, because I think that the conversations we could be having here could be very robust and can really advise the equity council a committee in a, in a much greater capacity. So with the, this new year, I'd like to see us communicating more and not just on that you know quarterly basis, which is something that came to my mind as we were talking earlier. And for budget priorities, just to kind of maybe begin the conversation about that. Um, one thing I'd like to see is the implementation of activity buses across the county um, after school so that our students who maybe don't have uh, older siblings or parents that are able to provide them transportation from after school clubs and activities or from sports are able to have some sort of transportation so they can participate in that part of their education, which can be so foundational and really uh, lead us to success. So uh, those are my two comments there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and I'll defer to you, Mr. Handy. You said there was another question. I'm going to make uh, sure. Yes, Ms. Scott. Okay. Oh, yes, so, so mm -hmm. right. Did you see that one, Ms. Scott? Some context. I, I don't think I did, and I don't want to miss anyone's question. So. Okay, the one I saw next in order was around. Um, well, I saw the question from Ms. Zelensky around the equity audit, which you spoke to. Um, the other one was more of a comment um, about, you know, uh, from Dr. Simpkins. Um, understand this council has an advisory role. It would be helpful if someone shares policies, initiatives, strategies, plans, et cetera. The equity committee is working with so we can provide feedback. I'll take that one, um, Ms. Scott. I'll, I'll, yes, uh, Dr. Simpkins, I'll make sure um, the council um, the council receives those, those materials. Uh, next was Ms. Scott. The next one was about the equity audit. I know that is posted online. Um, as well as a lot of these materials. But I don't know if you wanted to speak to that. She said, um, Ms. Zelensky is looking for some context around the equity audit that you referenced. Sure, certainly. Um, I can actually, I was going to see if I could uh, put a link in there because it's on our website mm -hmm. and um, it's under leadership and then it says equity metrics. Um, and Ms. Scott, I can, oh, I can take care of that if you like. I'm familiar with that. You want me to go ahead and drop that chat? I mean, drop that link in the chat. Yeah, you could drop the link in the chat. That would be great. And um, it looks like the question is, is the equity metrics are from July 2020. Correct. Um, and the reason for that was that when um, we formed this committee, I wanted this committee formed not on esoteric concepts of equity, but on hard data. What does equity look like at BCPS? Who are we serving? Who can we um, serve in a better or a different way. So that was where everything came out of, out of our policy, out of the audit, and that's what we built from. And now we're taking the next step and, and we have our council. Um, it says, when will it be updated? Um, well, that would be doing probably another um, uh, equity committee audit, but uh, we don't have, we haven't set a date for that yet. And then could information such as demographic makeup of special programming, including Magnus GT programming, et cetera, be included. Um, an audit can include a number of things. Um, so this one was to give us a baseline. And um, it said that, um, 
basically what the bottom, what the main um, persistent thing or what one of the major outcomes was that there were trends that were systemic and that were the same and were overlapping. And that was one of the really important um, things that showed as far as student outcomes. So it says one of the major outcomes of that meeting was the request for system-wide student outcome trend data disaggregated by student groups, race, ethnicity, and receipt of special services that would inform the committee around the following questions. You know, where are the gaps? Are the identified gaps persistent? And are the gaps widening and increasing? So that was where, um, sorry, and I don't mean to go into the into the whole audit, but it was it was very thorough and I would um, encourage everyone um, to read it. And it looks like there's another question here. It says, I agree with the suggestion by Ms. Denmere and would also like to add teacher pay for focus groups planning to implement actions and create development age appropriate materials for youngest learners. And I just want to make sure, did I um, miss any questions, um, Mr. Handy? Um, let me double check, Ms. Scott. I have it looks one. like there's a question from Ms. Pastor. Yeah, look at the other. Yeah, let me go back and monitor that. And I'll get that, I'll get that audit out to everyone. I was trying to pull that. Uh, but yeah, I think Ms. Pastor. I'll turn it over to you, Ms. Scott. Do you want to? Oh, yes. Go ahead, Ms. Pastor. Thank you. Um, Mr. Handy and Ms. Scott, you're looking at the suggestions in the chat, and that's great. And there's some really great ones. Um, before my suggestion is before we get into having a monthly meeting, when we have, especially based on these questions, no real context at this point undergirding what we're doing that we make sure that all of the people on the council have this body of information for which they are asking tonight. So Mr. Handy, a lot of it, some of it's in board docs, some web, different places. If we could, you know how you do those wonderful packets and, and we've talked about that, that mm -hmm. you put together a body of material, uh, some of which you've explained, some of which Ms. Um, Scott has mentioned so that our council members have time to read, process, and have their own context so that when we come back at the next uh, meeting, they will have it in the interim. They can send in questions based on things that they have read. Um, but I, I think they need they need the body of material that we have or the things about which we have spoken in committee if they are really going to be effective and understand where we are and where they might want to go as well. My suggestion. Ms. Scott, may I respond? Yes, certainly. Yep. Thank you, Ms. Pastor, for that recommendation. Um, I will certainly do that. I will compile those those documents and those resources and share them. Um, I do have emails for all of our email addresses for all of our council members. I'll get that out to them in the next few days. Um, I do have a question, Ms. Scott, if it's OK while I am here. Um, and, and going through, I noticed in my email that one of our student representatives was having trouble joining. Uh, he did email and say he was able to, and this is uh, Avery Webb. Uh, would, uh, would he be allowed to uh, do an introduction since we didn't hear from him earlier? I think I'm on mute. Yes, certainly. But okay, and then I'm watching our time, but um, yes. okay. Mr. Webb, are you there? Can you, are you able to uh, unmute and speak? He said in the email he was listening, so I don't know if, hopefully he's still there, but I just wanted to give him that opportunity since we hadn't, we didn't hear his voice. OK. All right. So Ms. Scott, I'll turn it back over to you. I know we were gathering feedback. Just to reiterate, I will gather those documents um, as Ms. Pastor has uh, suggested. I see there's a lot of um, requests on that. And uh, I'll just go back to the chat as well just to make sure we've covered everything. Um, Ms. Scott, do you want to? 
I know Mr. Thomas made a suggestion on monthly. I see one of our council members uh, had a question around that. I didn't know if and that's one thing I guess I want to make sure once we leave today that we did know when our next meeting was going to be scheduled. So um, can we come to consensus on that? Um, right now you said that our next meeting is scheduled uh, January 6th. I know we have our committee, our equity committee meeting is November 18th. And okay. you said our next council meeting is January 6th. And um, I just didn't know uh, um, the availability um, for all of our council to um, meet monthly. OK, um, so I just wasn't, I wasn't if, sure about that. OK, if I may um, to, to gather response to what you just stated, could we have the council members uh, use the chat to indicate whether they want quarterly or monthly? And I guess if there's anyone, I know we have a few that seem like they still could not chat. Perhaps they could unmute, but if we could get those that can use the chat to indicate whether they uh, are in favor of monthly or quarterly. If you could do that, please. Did you ask that? Committee or council members chime in. Thank you. So disregard one of uh, Mr. Thomas. <laughs> I'm technically a member of the council too, but no. You just are a committee member, Mr. <laughs> disregard mine. <laughs> okay, I'm just skimming through. So it looks like we're getting, and this is of course unofficial count. I do see quite a few monthly um, and a few no preference as well. And quite a few quarterly. And and quite a few quarterly, I agree. Uh, let's see. You're right, I, and thank you, Ms. Patrick. I go further in the beginning, a lot of quarterly with some monthly, so no preference. Uh, and I, I guess I will say this as 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 an uh, liaison, the staff liaison to this committee, I am sensitive to the the committee meetings that are already in place, and then these full board meetings that our uh, board members are attending as well. So. Yeah, um, it looks like uh, Ms. Mc uh, Dr. McCombs had just said as far as perhaps maybe like bi-monthly. I'm just wondering if monthly um, maybe, um, I'm, I'm just not, not sure um, as far as monthly, um, okay. maybe um, bi-monthly. Because we have our next committee meeting on the 18th and then um, I think, and then the next one would be in January. Okay, I, I see um, Ms. Pastor has a comment. Ms. Scott, if I may, could, okay, yes. so then there's Dr. Simpkins. Could, could we look at, I would like to suggest bi-monthly, almost, is there anyone who could not live with bi-monthly? Could I phrase it that way? Because I think bi-monthly might be that middle ground we were looking for. And I see Ms. Jones comment on a clear purpose. Again, I guess I'm looking at the time that remains. Right. And I guess if we come together two months from now, we get those documents and resources that Ms. Pastor spoke to, um, certainly can craft an agenda that would speak to a uh, purpose. And I do want to, you know, again, the, the budget's going to be a very key part because we are going to be in the midst of um, the review of our uh, proposed budget. So. I think that should be a major part of what we're going to focus upon. Uh, but again, I'll, I'll yield to um, Ms. Scott. Yes, I mean, the purpose of this council is to advise the committee, um, which we advise the board, to make equitable changes and to ensure that we are um, making sure that our, um, we advise board members, the committee, the board, 
on what is equitable for our students. And the council is the way that we hear from you, the people who are working with students who are, who are working in schools to advise us so that we are not making decisions in a vacuum, but we're hearing equitable, tangible, I think someone said actionable um, uh, solutions and um, issues so that we can then make sure that there's not a gap in between that we're hearing it and then we're acting upon it. So that is the, I mean, we, we can, you know, um, as Mr. Handy said, we will, you know, draft something, um, but that was the purpose of this council. May I ask my question, make my comment? Who, oh, Ms. Pastor, yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, all of the things that have just been said until they read the, the council gets to read the body and it is a body of information. Um, it is a little bit more difficult to make a decision about um, how often and we do meet in January. So by the time they get the material, they're able to read it and digest it. It will be January. So that's our next scheduled meeting and then they will really have a full-throated um, uh, vision and view of where we are. So I'm just suggesting that we table the uh, meetings because we have one in January, allow them to get the material, and then we have that discussion if Ms. Scott and, Ms. and the committee decides that it, it's what we want to do, have that decision again um, in Jan or that discussion in January with the full council. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and it looks like there was a statement in the chat that said, regardless of the meeting schedule, you still like feedback on budget priorities sent to Mr. Handy within the next two weeks, right? And yes, that is correct. Thank you, Ms. Pastor. And I just put in the chat um, a link to the to BCPS website and then the path to go to get to the um, equity metrics data um, July 2020 that was um, commissioned when we first formed the committee. Okay. Is there any other information, Mr. Handy? Uh, just I'll say in closing remarks, Ms. Scott, it looks like we have consensus on um, next meeting being in January and then if we look at January, March, May, I guess we are in a bi-monthly format um, and uh, there was also a request to get the notice out earlier. I will take that one. I know this meeting was stood up um, in a very quick fashion and I want to thank uh, the council members for being so responsive and thank the committee as well um, for quickly responding to the suggestion that we meet on this date. So um, yeah, just to say yes, please do send me anything on the budget and I'll make sure I pass that on to the committee. Uh, we will meet in March. I'm sorry, in January. I work with Miss um, Fast and uh, Dr. Yarbrough and Miss Fast to get our date out um, as soon as possible and get that invitation out. And I believe there's only one more slide, and that is my contact information. So I'll just ask Miss Fast that we can move that forward, and then uh, Miss Scott, I will uh, yield to you as far as um, closing us out or whatever uh, you choose to do at this point. Thank you for that, Mr. Handy, and thank you everyone um, who, who who's here, who attended, who's a part of this meeting. Um, the last part is to find out, um, is there any further business, Mr. Handy? Uh, no further business, um, Ms. Scott, just if we could get one advance on the slide, just so. Oh yeah, uh, your email. Yeah, and you all, I, I did email everyone directly. However, just want to make sure go. that way it's in the record and all that good stuff. All right, thank you. Excellent. And thank you everyone for coming and um, um, Mr. Handy and Dr. Yarborough um, and, and everyone for um, uh, being a part of this. And um, uh, the next regularly scheduled equity meeting will be held on Thursday, November 18th, 2021 at 4 p.m. So since there is no further business, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all for coming. I hope everyone thank has Thank you everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.